We fear not having. We fear letting go and then eventually regretting that decision. We fear being alone. We don't know if something better is around the corner. But when we exist in scarcity, we walk about our life assuming that 100% nothing better is around the corner. And this life assumption is very heavy. It causes a lot of anxiety and it's just 100% not true. Welcome to the Raw and Half Podcast, where we get real and then some. I am your host, Jasmine Siri, and every week I will speak on topics that align with reprogramming the subconscious mind. I share my experiences and discuss how I navigate life consciously so we can reach higher heights and deeper dimensions of the mind to reach our goals from a healed and open place together. So let's get started. One of the most interesting things about reprogramming the subconscious is that we don't know of the things that we need to shift or change until it is time. And it feels mostly for myself that we do some work and we're bopping along and a new thing arises that requires something else from us. Not more, just something else, something different. And we're never aware of the things in our hearts and minds that need shifting until we find ourselves in the discomfort of feeling them, or when we've stuffed it down and ignored it as much as possible and it starts to burst through the seams, we now have no choice but to challenge it and change it. I think the work of healing is so fascinating for me because it's something you can't hide. Whether we see it or not, the internal work we do shows up in many areas of our lives, in our businesses, in our familial dynamics, in our love life, or our romantic encounters with these complete strangers. And that worried me for a while, mainly because people could see my imperfections, and as a Virgo, I like to be seamless. I don't like people seeing the things that are wrong with me. I don't know. That's just me. And also because it's so close to the root of my truth or the very fabric of who I am as a person, I fear that if I wear it on my skin, I'll be judged or taken advantage of. And all of these fears never change the constant need for healing anyway. We need to transform Because as within, so without. So everything that I produce is just a product of the work that I have or have not done. And on the topic of scarcity and the shifting from scarcity to abundance, it's one of those beliefs that creeps up on you. Some of us walk confidently in our lives and are never able to recognize our habits of lack or scarcity or that it's even something that we have the power to change or work through. I wanted to develop an episode that is so close to my heart that if the people in my community are at a standstill in any stage of their ascension, they can use this as a journaling tool. So scarcity is no longer a challenge like it is or has been for me for a very long time. I want to overcome this thing within myself, so I assume if I bring it to the collective, it'll be just another tool for them to use so they can overcome their challenges too. I think scarcity is seeded in us. Most times at such a young age, we faintly recognize it. For example, do you have fond memories of your grandparents' pantry being full of expired ingredients or other miscellaneous items that shouldn't go there? That may be an indication in the 3D of a scarcity mindset. If anyone grew up in a family that was afraid of throwing food away, if you had to fold your plate and push it down (laughs) when you were at your family's house because you would hear something if they saw that there was more food on the plate, that is so subtle, but it could be a scarcity trickle down. How is your closet or your drawer space? Do you hang on to old articles of clothing linked to different sentimental times in your past? Were you the younger sibling that always received a hand-me-down or never had back-to-school shopping sessions so everything you had had to last? Your body couldn't necessarily change because that would mean you would have to afford more clothes for the next year. 
Do you distance yourself from your friends because you feel guilty about indulging in a time well spent, maybe having a drink or a good dinner that will cost you? Do you feel guilty about enjoying yourself? If this is all you, I'm talking to you. And I'm talking to myself. And there's so many more things and ways we guard ourselves from moving on, taking up space, or letting go. All of these things are signs that we may have a scarcity mindset. And I want to say, hello. Let's hug it out. Let's sit down. Let's talk about it. Because if this is the thing that's keeping you from expanding or meeting your goals financially, changing your outcome, I want to be a part of you turning that new leaf. I want to turn a new leaf in my life, and what better way to do that is to build community around it. So, I just wanted to out myself. All the things that I described in those scenarios were my own personal experiences, and I hold no shame. More than a hold confusion, right? I didn't know where it all started beyond my own upbringing. And if you can also identify with the same level of confusion, I want you to know that it's okay. Because sometimes the things we carry are not ours, but our ancestors. And with this gift of life, we are given the task to heal certain wounds for our bloodline to move forward. So it's really not even about you. You kind of have to get over yourself. I think if I can dig deep into my soul's remembrance of the past lives or the many ancestors inside of me that have fought for the right that I have to exist in the freedoms that I do now... I don't think that they could foresee the stains that it left on the self-esteem of the generations that followed them. But I think with hope and acceptance that our life is not a consequence or a, a trauma bond with the, your family members, but an opportunity to continue the work, we can clean those stains that were a result of doing remarkable work of fighting for the reality that we have now. So we don't have to necessarily take pride in all of the remnants of trauma and toxicity, but we can see it for what it is, understand it with love and grace, and move forward and move upward. Because that's what we're here to do, I think. Or I think that's what I'm supposed to be doing with my life. I realize, you know, everybody is not supposed to be healing things. Like, not everybody is on the task to heal. And that is okay. I have to be okay with that. So, if this type of stuff interests you, I'm glad that it does. Because we have found a tribe. But if it doesn't, hey, like, I don't want to bore you. I just like talking deep about things. Maybe the first steps outside of scarcity and into abundance is nurturing yourself through stages of victimhood. This work is hard. It's hard navigating what is victimhood outside of just unfortunate circumstances. Because when we get back to the truth of our experiences, they get us riled up, they get us to feel those same intense emotions. But we have to remember the purpose of the work. We're not going back into the past and bringing up all of these emotions just to find someone to blame. We go into the past so that we can bring love, grace, and understanding into the situations where maybe our past selves or our ancestors had to use the feelings of fear to survive. Moments of fear that have resulted in our experiences of lack and fear of being without. I realized that in different stages of survival, there was just no room for certain emotions, or so we were taught. Especially for different first-generation families coming to this country with few resources, minorities fighting against walls of oppression, all of the different scenarios. Um, when you're constantly in a fight and a test of your strength and resilience, one tear one sign of defeat, one moment to catch your breath could mean life or death. So I have to consider the children existing in the wombs of that type of struggle and the ways nurturing had to be delivered differently in that time so that their children can understand the severity of survival. And when I think about all of that in totality, yeah, I am a little less angry 
and a little more empathetic about all of the trauma and the social practices that we have been behind on as a people. And this may sound a little bit out there, but what if through intense or intentional meditation or maybe in our deepest sleep, we're able to travel back in time, reach our ancestors and maybe give them the vision of our realities right now to give them that extra push and determination of this future that they're fighting to have back then or that they were fighting to have back then. I think when we exist in scarcity and we exist in fear, it comes with a level of undermining our own abilities. And we need that extra push to forget it all. Or we need that vision of insight that there is something better on the horizon to keep us focused on the most important thing, which is creating a better life for our future generations, right? I personally think it's so beautiful that we are existing in a reality as a result of the hope and the faith of the generations of our past and I always try to figure out ways to push that needle forward or ways that I can be intentional about reaching new heights or newer levels of making this world a better place I don't know it that's just it's just in my heart to feel I think the distance in time has separated us from the reality of what our history means for the present that we live in. I think we're distracted and sometimes we take our history for granted and it breaks my heart a little bit. It's like when we do the work to heal the very small mundane things in our day to day, it's a way to accept and appreciate all of the work that was done in the past to make my future what it is today. I think building a legacy is just so much more than the children that we create. I think it's just how we choose to make a difference every single day. And, you know, as a woman, it's very hard to remember when we're so far away from the past. It's like we're not really far away from the past, but we like to think that because we have advanced in technology that the past is still not within reach. And... 400 years is not a long time, you know? But I say all of that to say, this is really important to me. And as I'm growing as a woman, I think in the things that I want for my future and the things that I want for my life and in my partnerships, friendships, it's like you don't have to necessarily care about everything that I care about. But as far as like building a legacy with me and what I want my children to experience in the future I take the work of like stripping the layers very seriously and you know the person that ends up with me is just gonna have to deal with that I'm sorry and I get told all the time it's like you're so passionate you're so intense like all of this stuff and I'm like well you know what maybe you guys have been so distracted that you guys just aren't passionate enough that there's so many things that you can put your attention to but the fact that I kind of like to focus on this one thing but I'm I like to dive really deep into it it scares people away and it, it, it can it can be a little intense fuck it you know but I'd rather be 100% and authentically who I am than mildly bits and pieces of myself to make others feel comfortable i'm a very polarizing person people either really love me or really hate me there's nothing really in between and um at first i used to think that it was um, a curse but honestly it is what it is i like to draw a clear line in the sand you know but anyways moving on and back to the topic of our ancestors for women or single mothers and the women in my life that had no choice but to provide or figure it out or endure, the world never gave them space to feel what it was like to be where they were or to be where they are. It was like if they cried, the world would give them more things to cry about. So they developed this stoicism and I think that is due for softness. And in order to heal this very deep pocket in our ancestry, we show up as the product of their hard work and grant them the grace, nurturing, love, and softness that this world never wanted them to have or feel. 
and just give them permission to take up space with the complexity of their unresolved emotions so that they are open enough to become something new, something different, something outside of their, you know, previous stories or histories of pain. And I think for people that have been under a certain level of thinking for so long, different generations, they have this different way of thinking from how we think now. They often forget that they can become something new. I think we forget that. We have the ability to become new, that it is actually a choice to repeat the cycles of scarcity. If we have the same old job, the same old car, lifestyle, and everyone in our family didn't have much, we think the consistency is much more powerful than our abilities to change it all. And it all starts within the mind. The first thing I did as a result of the awareness of my own scarcity was an inch towards minimalism. I opened my bathroom drawer of this new apartment that I lived in and I saw the cluster of products that I'm honestly hoarding and I was like, wait, this is probably why I feel so overwhelmed because I want clarity in the mind but my 3D life is full of clutter and things that I'm afraid to not have anymore. It's like my past self and my newer self were merging. I still haven't cleaned up the past versions of myself. I still had products and like braiding hair. Braiding hair. Now, if you can visually see this podcast, you know my bald-headed ass isn't braiding anything to my scalp anytime soon. So I had to ask myself, like, why am I holding on to this? What is happening? And I think the truth was, I didn't know how to be okay with letting go and being without. Things leaving my life just meant that I was going without. And because that feeling is uncomfortable for me, I'd rather hold on to things, even the things that I didn't need, if it meant it was at my disposal. And I think that's the root of scarcity. We fear not having. We fear letting go and then eventually regretting that decision. We fear being alone. We don't know if something better is around the corner. But when we exist in scarcity, we walk about our life assuming that 100% nothing better is around the corner. And this life assumption is very heavy. It causes a lot of anxiety. And it's just 100% not true. And truthfully, we lack a bit of faith in a higher power's abundance of resources. We don't want to lose control of putting anything important in anyone else's hands, not even the very God that we claim to love. I think personally for me, I I struggled with letting go of the definite no's than waiting on the absolute yes. This is why for so long I was repelling instead of attracting. Not only was I not in the mindset of receiving, but I was preparing myself only for the worst possible outcome. This level of scarcity sometimes shows up when money is coming in. I have to ask you, how long do you hold on to that paycheck before you pay the bills that need to be paid? The money is burning a hole in your pocket and the phone is ringing off the hook to make those payments. And have you ever thought to yourself, why am I holding on to this? Why am I holding off taking care of my responsibilities? When I answered this for myself, when I saw that it was happening, I think for me, it was like, I work so hard. I want my money to be mine. I was working the multiple jobs. I was doing all of those things to just survive and then all of it would just disappear and it would make me feel defeated. I think when I saw the money in my account, I felt more safe, but in reality, it was just a ticking time bomb before those subscriptions just was taking it out. And when it took it out, it felt like they were taking something for me, not I was blessed enough to take care of my responsibilities. I worked so hard, I wanted my money to be mine. And then I grew more curious. Why do I want to be this pack rat for money? What does that mean, you know? I think being with money is much better than being without. 
right? That's on the surface. But if you think deeper, money is just an energy that has to stay in motion to live out its own purpose. It has to come in and it has to go out. That is its function. And in order to master that energy or allow it to work with you, we have to do the work within its properties by respecting and accepting that it comes and it goes. I think stagnancy starts when you choose to hold anything so tightly out of fear. The dead loved one, the children that grow up and leave the home, the unfulfilling relationships, the low paying job. When you're open to anything and trust its properties to do only what it does by coming and going like love, life, money, not only do we allow it to flow, not only will more come, more will leave, but we appreciate the presence of its arrival a lot more and we're more present in it. We appreciate and we have gratitude for just having the thing that we know eventually could leave again. And this is something that just cracked me right open. When you're able to see past the pain of just being without, you learn you truly do have so much more in everything that you already have. You have more value in all of the things that you have right now. It's just a matter of choosing whether or not you want to open yourself up to be present enough to see it. Lack also comes with the feeling of never having enough. So this greed turns into obsession, turns into different forms of idolatry. We idolize the people that we assume have more than us. And we think that if we have what they have, or if we have more, or to that extent, automatically our nervous systems will just be regulated. And that never really happens. My productivity levels change when I realize I have every tool right now to succeed. Even if it's not necessarily the best tool to have, I have more than enough with whatever's already in my life. I could see and feel that the root of resourcefulness was in presence and gratitude. And I hope this serves someone because it took me a while to realize it, but it definitely served me. Moving on to romantic relationships. If I could give myself advice or to give anyone advice, any young person in a relationship or anyone that's probably resonating with a lot of the things that I said today, is notice the signs of a cheap spirit early. They exist in lack and scarcity. And if you're doing the work to heal that, someone loving you in that capacity will make you second guess the work. It will cause you to devalue yourself, even mismanage your own self-worth. And I'm not saying that being responsible with finances or being with someone who has more financially is bad or it makes you a specific type of person. I'm saying when you share presence with a person that scoffs after every bill, every purchase, every financial or emotional exchange with scarcity and fear, it's hard to make connection with them. It's going to turn into producing children that will always feel like a burden because of the emotional and financial weight of their existence. And if they can make you feel like you're better off being a cheaper version of yourself, they will definitely instill that into the children that you provide for them. And those children will go out into the world feeling like they're better off either not being here or putting themselves on a low shelf will make them more desirable. And that is not true. Follow me. If a woman is made to multiply and you both are afraid to invest anything emotionally, financially, nothing will grow of that. Zero times anything is zero. And I think... There was a large part of myself that wanted to ignore the zero value that someone was bringing into my life out of scarcity. And I thought that maybe with time or if I did different things the wrong, to the wrong person, that the wrong person would do right by me. And that's just, unfortunately, those learning experiences that you have to have. 
it's not true it's not life I had a message like in passing where I was looking at my dog and she has this ball that you can put treats in it and it stimulates them them trying to get the treats out for my girl my dog she had already gotten the treats out it was empty but the smell of the treat that was there still lingered and I just watched her struggle and claw and strategize her way into emptiness to get what she desired from it and I said girl it's done you can't get anything out of what is not there and I was like oh wait damn like what am I trying to tell myself here like I'm trying to tell myself something how many times have I dug deep into empty pots tried to scale a ladder that had an invisible whites only sign in front of it for certain jobs or relationships and friendships that led me to believe that if I worked harder I would have gotten more of a better experience from them in some cases once you've got something out of that thing you will never get any more out of it again and that is an indication that it's your time to move on I think scarcity brings a delusion that nothing is supposed to change if we're intentional about putting more energy towards it. This will force us into a madness, holding on to what's already gone and what will never be. And when this happens, I have to tell you, the longer that you hold on, the more it'll burn. And then... God steps in and he will literally do something that breaks your heart so much that you have no choice but to let go. So if you find yourself around that energy, whether it be your friends, your family members, romantic partners, notice it and just slowly start to emancipate yourself from it because if where you are in your growth and how fragile your mindset is and trying to develop these new things inside of you you don't need anyone challenging or bringing fear into your upward beliefs we don't need anyone talking fear into our plans that lead us back into stagnancy remember we have to respect the properties of all things in life to understand that we can't hold so tightly to anything anything and we have to be grateful for that on top of it so anyway i think this is why the work is so tricky people's peers loved ones they will try to challenge your beliefs and better ways of becoming it is very hard when you have nothing but a representation of your past or old wounds or everything that is hard to let go of but you have to stay strong. Sometimes the work we do, we will never enjoy the fruit of. And maybe we do it subconsciously for the young person that lives after we are dead and gone, much like the people from our past that were so brave enough to do the work for us to live in the life that we have now. So we just do our due diligence by continuing the work. And I love you all so much. Thank you all so much for making it to this far into the video and just being a part of my rants. Let me know in the comments below what you felt about this episode. I hope to see you on my next one. Don't forget to follow me at jasmine.siri on Instagram. You can listen to this audio on Spotify or Apple Podcasts at the Ron Half Podcast. And I hope to hear from you all in my next one.